Hmm. Students, are you able to see the PPT? Yes, are you able to see the PPT? Yes, sir, visible, sir. Okay. Okay, so already in previous lectures, we have done the exact analysis and approximate analysis using H parameter model, right? And you remember these things eh? in exact analysis, in exact analysis, the current gain is given by this expression, AI is equal to minus F, so here I have read, not written the subscript like uh, FE if it is common emitter transistor or if it is common collector transistor then uh, here you have to write uh, FC okay so general generalized tech, general general formula I have written written here so the current gain is given by minus HF divided by one plus H naught RL where RL is the load. Same way in approximate analysis, the current gain is given by HF. If it is common emitter transistor, HFE. If it is common collector transistor, then HFC, like that. Then input resistance in exact analysis is HIE plus AIE, that is current gain, into HR into RL. Now, input resistance in case of approximate analysis is HIE. Okay. Now, the voltage gain is AV is equal to AI RL by RI in exact analysis, and exact it is same in approximate analysis also. Okay. Okay, so you remember these things, and uh, one more point you remember. the standard values okay of the h parameter yes so you just concentrate in common emitter and common collector okay you just concentrate in common emitter common collector h i e and h i c both are equal right so h i e is equal to H I C. Its value is 1100 ohm. Okay. Then in common emitter, the reverse voltage gain is very small, and its value is 2.5 into 10 raised to power minus 4. Whereas in common collector, this reverse voltage gain is 1. H R C is 1. Then uh, you just see H O E its value is 1 by 40k and HOC is 1 by 40k. So this is also equal. So HIE is equal to HIC. HOE is equal to HOC. Okay. And HRC is 1. And HFC and HFE, this is current gain. HFE is 50 and HFC is minus 51. Okay. So you remember these. With this, we will move to the Darlington pair analysis. Okay. So here, this is the diagram of Darlington pair. Here the two transistors are connected in cascade, right? Cascade means one after another. So here we have connected two transistors, okay? And this is transistor number one, Q1. This is transistor number two, Q2. Now both are NPN transistors, both are NPN transistors. 
so collector of both this is collector here collector of both are connected to plus vcc here there is a voltage source vs and rs is the internal resistance of this voltage source and due to this one ib1 is flowing base current of transistor number 1 is ib1 now in the collector terminal ic1 is flowing now in emitter terminal it is ie1 now the output of emitter the emitter of q1 is connected to the base of q2 so whatever is the com current coming out from emitter in q1 same current is going inside the base of q2 so i e1 is equal to i b2 then there is i c2 is also here and here i e2 which is emitter current and in q1 transistor you just you just observe the q1 transistor here we here we have not connected any emitter resistance see emitter is not there so emitter resistance is not there so re1 emitter of first transistor is considered as infinity because there is no transistor which is open circuit there it is considered as uh, infinity and in q2 there is a emitter transistor and basically you are taking the output across this emitter transistor uh, emitter resistor of q2 you are taking output across this so always remember whenever you are taking output across emitter resistor then the configuration of the connection is common collector okay see if you recall in this way uh, suppose this is a transistor this is re this is rc and from here we have taken some load resistor rl so here we are taking the output across this rl so in this case this connection is common emitter connection okay and here we are taking the output across emitter resistance so this this connection is common collector transistor so always remember in darlington pair both of these transistors are connected in common collector configuration okay now you see from this point from this point i am looking inside this transistor so this will give me my input resistance ri1 well, i am looking from transistor number 1 ri1 ah yeah okay congratulations <laughs> now if from this point from this point i if, if i look this side then i will get the input resistance of transistor number 2 right this is q2 transistor number 2 and from this side if i look inside this then i will get the input resistance of transistor number 1 okay now when we are using the darlington pair then we make some assumptions both the transistors are identical so this q1 and q2 both are exactly same transistor second both the transistors have identical values of h parameters these are also our assumption so if both transistors are identical same then their h parameter values will also be same okay 
right now we have to do the analysis of darlington pair so here analysis of darlington pair means we shall find out we shall find out the current gain input impedance voltage impedance uh, gain and output admittance if we will complete all these four expressions calculation of the expression then it is said that we have done the analysis so in examination also these things are important for example it can be asked that find the current gain of a darlington pair then you have to derive that or it may be asked that find the input impedance of darlington pair so you have to find that expression okay so these are important topics so now we will go and we will calculate first current gain okay so it is denoted by ai and this current gain so see this is an example of cascade amplifier cascade means two amplifiers two transistors are connected one after another like this this is our transistor number 1 this is our transistor number 2 okay two transistors are there so this transistor is having a current gain suppose ai1 this transistor is having a current gain suppose ai2 and if somebody ask you find out the overall current gain of this whole whole circuit so this is an example of cascade cascade connection so overall current gain will be the individual current gain of the transistors you take and you multiply those like this then you will get overall current gain and overall voltage gain same way if you want to calculate overall voltage voltage gain then first find out the voltage gain of transistor number 1 then find out the voltage gain of transistor number 2 multiply those two then you will get overall voltage gain okay so we have to find out the overall current gain of this darlington pair so this ai is given by ai1 multiplied by ai2 so this is my expression number 1 so here ai1 is current gain of q1 transistor and ai2 is current gain of q2 transistor okay now first we will do the calculation of ai2 which is the uh, current gain of my second transistor this one so we calculate so here what we will do for calculation of ai2 we will use the approximate analysis of q2 right so in approximate analysis the current gain in approximate analysis you should remember what is the formula h f c in approximate analysis you can see here this no not this yes see here approximate analysis this side ai current gain will come hmm. 
we are this. See this, we derived yesterday, this one. Yesterday we have done this, right? So current gain is this one, minus HFE, okay? So here this minus, it is minus HFE, actually I have written uh, HFE only. This, it is minus HFE, okay? So current gain in approximate analysis is minus HFE for common emitter configuration. If it is common collector configuration, then it is minus HFC. So same thing you can find here. For transistor 2, Q2, we are doing approximate analysis. So AI2 is equal to minus HFC. This is my expression number 2. Now, if you, now standard values, I have shown you the standard values. HFE is 50, HFC is minus 51, right? So you see minus 51, how you can write minus 51? You can write minus 51 like this, minus sign you have taken common, then inside bracket 50 plus one, okay? It is same as minus 51 or minus 51 is your HFC. So here I have written HFC, then right side minus within bracket 50, HFE value is 50. So within bracket 50 plus one. And this minus sign I will transfer to left side. So it will become minus HFC is equal to HFE, my HFE plus one. This is expression number three. So now minus HFC can be written as HFE plus one. So my current gain, this expression two will become AI two is equal to HFE plus one. Okay. And value of HFE is 50. So 50. 50 plus 1 is your 51 and it is approximately same as 50, right? It is approximately equal to 50. There is not much used deviation. So this HFE plus 1 can also be approximately written as HFE, okay? So the current gain by using approximate analysis of transistor 2 we will get AI1, AI2 is equal to HFE. This is my expression number three. Now we will find out the current gain of transistor one by using exact analysis. But before that, you just see um, RI2. What is RI2? See this figure, this is RI2. Input resistance of this Q2, okay? So input resistance of this Q2 by using by using exact analysis, if you find, then you will find this expression. This is the expression. Okay, you can see this. See here in exact analysis, Ri is equal to HI plus AI HR RL, right? So same thing you can see here, I have written. Now since this is common collector transistor, that's why RI2 is equal to HIC plus AI2. AI2 because we are taking the input impedance of Q2. So you have to take the current gain of the second transistor only then HRC RE. This will come from exact analysis. Now we know that HIC and HIE both are equal. Both values are equal. Standard values are 1100 ohm and HRC is one. Right, reverse voltage gain of common collector is one. That's why it is used as a buffer. So now with this, what will happen? RI2 it will become this HIC. You can write it as a HI, HIE because we have to bring the expression in terms of E. 
and common, uh, common emitter configuration. So here it is HIE plus AI2 multiplied by RE because this HRC is 1. So this will become AI2 into RE and this HIC will become HIE. So this is our expression. Okay. Now here RI2 is equal to this is HIE same then AI2 current gain of second transistor this. So here I have written this or you can write this also. So there I have written HFE plus 1. So here I have written HFE plus 1 into RE. Now RI2 that is input impedance of Q2 transistor is also the load of Q1 transistor. You can see here. See, this is our Q1 and this is our Q2. From here, if we look inside the transistor Q2, then whatever resistance we see, that will be the input resistance of Q2. But that is the out this that is the load of q1 that is the load resistance of q1 okay because see suppose suppose this is a transistor and this is a transistor so from here whatever resistance you are seeing that is the input resistance for this transistor but that is the output resistance or load resistance of this transistor, right? So Ri2 is equal to RL1, load resistance of first transistor. So same thing I have written here. RL1 and Ri2 is same. It is HIE plus 1 plus HFE RE. Okay, now I will write the expression of current gain of first transistor by using exact analysis. So remember, for Q2, we will use approximate analysis. Approximate. And for Q1, we will use exact. So AI1 is the current gain of Q1 transistor. So for that expression of exact analysis, I will write. Minus HFC. What is the formula there? Same you should use. You see here. Uh, current gain, this one, minus HFC divided by 1 plus HOC plus RL. Okay, so minus HFC divided by 1 plus HOC RL. Okay. Now, minus HFC, already we have calculated earlier this this one minus HFC you can write it as HFE plus 1 oh this HFC I have written as 1 plus HFE divide by this is 1 and plus now this is HOC HOC and HOE are also same standard values are 1 by 40 K so in place of HOC you can write HOE then there is RL okay oh, right now this RL, this is a load of first transistor. So load of first transistor is same as the input resistance of second transistor. So in place of RL, you can also write RI2, right? And what is the expression of RI2? Already we have derived here. HIE plus 1 plus HFE RE. This we will write in place of this RL. So now see here, this is same as it is I have written, 1 plus HOE, same I have written for, but in place of RL, I have written HIE plus 1 plus HFE RE. That is the expression of RI2. And then this is equal to, now I will simplify this, 1 plus HFE, I can write it, write it as HFE. So this 1 plus HFE, this I have written here as HFE, okay, and it is multiplied by RE plus HIE, this term is inside bracket, outside bracket HOE, 
plus 1 and at the numerator it is 1 plus HFE. Now again at the numerator this 1 plus HFE I have written as HFE. So I got this expression. I have opened this bracket also. So I will get HOE HIE plus HOE HFE RE. And this is the this is the expression of AI1. So what is the overall current gain? AI1 into AI2. So AI1, this is AI1. And what is AI2? Already we have calculated the AI2 with this expression number 3. This AI2 is HFE. So I will take and write the HFE there. This, this is AI2. So HFE into HFE, it will become HFE square. Okay, this is HFE square and in numerator, same term will be there. So this is the expression of current gain of a Darlington pair. This is the expression of current gain of Darlington pair, right? Now we will see the input impedance of Darlington pair that is Ri. So the input impedance of Darlington pair Ri is the input impedance of Q1 transistor that is Ri1. So you can see here this transistor. What is the overall input impedance of the suppose this is my Darlington pair. So whatever resistance you will see here, this is your input resistance of this whole Darlington pair. And this Darlington pair you can represent in this way. So whatever this Ri1, this is your input resistance, input impedance of the whole Darlington pair. Okay. So same thing I have written here, the input impedance of Darlington pair that is Ri is equal to the input impedance of transistor Q1. And for the transistor Q1, we have to do the exact analysis. So the input resistance of transistor Q1 in exact analysis, this is a formula. For a common collector, you are writing C this. Okay. If it is a common emitter transistor, then it is HIE. In that way only we have to write. So input resistance of Q1 transistor by exact analysis is HIC plus AI1 because AI1 because we are doing the exact analysis of Q1 transistor. So you have to take the current gain of Q1 transistor multiplied by HRC multiplied by RL1 load resistance of Q1. Now since HIC and HIE both are equal Right, already we have seen uh, this is 1100. This you can see here HIC and HIE standard values are 1100 ohm. Okay, this this HRC reverse voltage gain of common collector transistor is one. Okay, so now this RI one will become HIC, you write HIE, then AI1, HRC is 1, after that RL1. This expression we will get. Okay. Now, since RL1 means load resistance of Q1 is same as the input resistance of Q2, right? Whatever is the load resistance of Q1, that is same as the input resistance of Q2. Okay. So, Ri1, you can write it as HIE, it is same, this current gain AI1, it is same, this now in place of load, load resistance of Q1, RL1, you can write it as input resistance of Q2. This is my expression number 
six. Okay. Now, now you see this RI one. This is same RI one, which is equal to input impedance of this uh, uh, Darlington pair. But here, AI one, we have to put this value AI one. And what is the AI one? Exact analysis of current gain of transistor one, right? So this expression, current gain, already we have calculated in previous case this this is ai1 right so this we have taken and now in this ai1 uh, or you can write it as in this way 1 plus hfe is your this hfe divide by right you take this expression this one this one right in this part simply i have done one plus hfe is equal to hfe this only i have written so i have taken this expression okay so you can see this ai1 is equal to hfe divided by one plus hoe hie plus hfe re now here you should remember one thing HIE is 1100 ohm. Already we know that this HIE, this term is 1100 ohm, a standard value. And the value of RE, if you recall in the transistors, whatever resistance you connect here, this is your RE. Generally, its value is around 1K. Its value is around 1K, 1000 ohm. So H I E and H and R E are approximately more or more or less. It are com these are comparable. They are around uh, having same value more or less, right? But here you see in this term R E multiplied by F E. What is the value of F E? Standard value of F E is 50. So 50 is multiplied in R E you will get some value whereas hie is around well, 1100 so if you take a re is 1k then in that if you multiply it by 50 then what you will get 50k right so this part this part is around 50k and this part is around 1 uh, 1k 1100 ohm so you can neglect the smaller one because this is a huge difference you can neglect this part okay so this you can neglect so now this equation number seven how it will looks like hfe it is same as this one this is one now inside this bracket you can neglect this hie so inside this bracket you only have now hfe re so in that you multiply HOE. So what we will get HOE, HFE, RE. This is my expression number eight. Okay. Now we got the value of AI. Simply what you have to do in this expression number six. See, we have to find this RI1. If you are able to find this RI1, it is equal to your RI, which is the input impedance of the transistor. So in RI1, this expression number 6, HIE, RI2, and AI1. Already we have found just now the value of AI1. So we will write that value there. So you see here, RI1 is HIE plus this part. This is your, this value, whatever we calculated, AI1 and multiply it by Ri2. Ri2 is here. Okay. But what is the value of Ri2? Ri2 already is somewhere we calculated this.
this one why it is not going So Ri2 is this, Hie plus, either you can take this or in place of 1 plus Hfe, you can write Hfe only. This is also okay. So this value we will put there, here. Yeah. So this is Hie plus 1 plus Hfe into Re, right? This whole, so this is Ai1 and this is R I two. So now you see next what I have written H I E. This is exactly same. Then this part H F E one plus H O E H R E. This is also same I have written. Then here what I have written. This is your HFE. So it is your H F E R E. And here it is H I E. And already we have here we have done the same thing. H I E around 1100. R E is comparable with H I E. So H F E H R E this part and this part in these two you can neglect this same thing I have done here. Now here HFERE is there, so this I have neglected. So I have written this here only, HFERE, okay? And now in the next part, this HIE, same as it is, I have written here. And this HFE and this HFE is multiplied, so it is HFE square, and then this is HRE in the denominator, nothing change it is same so this is the expression of your input impedance of darlington pair okay so uh, students uh, tomorrow also i will take the class at 4 only because I have the lab for the third year students in the morning, right? Your tomorrow class is at nine in the morning, but I will take that class at four in the evening because in morning I have the lab for third year students, right? So when, when you are coming to the college students, Twenty seconds. Twenty? Two. Twenty-two? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, so this means on Monday, Tuesday also I can have one, one, one classes, right? So, okay. Then. Okay. Yes. But can you just forward as the material of fourth chapter? Fourth and third. Fourth, fourth. Third. So we have we are in third chapter, sir. You see, uh, whatever I am using the slides here, right? See, already I have given you the notes, handwritten notes also I have given. But once again, once again I will compile all these, right? so that it will be easy for you to attend the mid test too right so again i will compile it and i will give it to you this most probably on saturday right because tomorrow class i will also cover after that all the important things i will compile and uh, i will give it to you okay, okay.